environment. Now, what's great about this is I have that print layout and this interactive layout in the same project, in the same application. I'm going to split the window. I'm going to show you two windows, in fact. And you'll see one of them I'm showing you the flash. The other I'm showing you the print. Currently, in fact, they look exactly the same. Maybe that's what you want. Or maybe you want them to look different. So in the flash design version, I can go and make some changes, move some boxes around. But my print design is independent and doesn't change. Now, there are some things you want always to be consistent, though. For example, let's say it changes from 45 new designs to just 44 new designs. Can you change that, says the client, the art director, whoever? Well, if I had two documents, this becomes a bit tricky. But I already synchronized that content using the shared content feature of Quark Express. So when I go in and make a change over here in the, the interactive layout that I just created, I make that change from 45 to 44. Take a look, and you'll see in both windows, the print layout and the interactive layout. Because I made the decision to synchronize that together, stay in sync. Okay, so that was easy. Let's close up the print layout for now and work just on the flash for a while. Remember, we, we created this layout as a kind of static flash file, not unlike a PDF or a PowerPoint, where you can move through the pages with cursor keys. But what we want is more than that. We want interactivity, which is very easy to create with Quark Express 8, because you don't need a program. All we need to do is this one central palette, which controls all of your interactivity, very easy to use and designer friendly. So I'm going to open that up and get to work. I'm also going to, before I do that though, open up a, a little library I created with just some Quark Express boxes. I'm going to show you later what this looks like. There's no magic to this. This is just Quark Express boxes. So I've moved my library to the page and I've, uh, I've dragged a button from that library and put it on the page. I want this button to jump to page six. I'm going to make it interactive. So now I'm going to open up my interactive palette. Everything to do with interactivity is right here. So my button is already defined over in the library. It's already named. But what I want to do now is to actually make it do something. What's the event that's going to happen? The user is going to click on it. So I'm going to choose an event of when someone clicks on the button and releases the mouse. We call that click up. What I'm going to do now then is I'm going to say when I click on that, go to page six. It's asking me the questions. What kind of effect would you like to use? I'll use a zoom in effect or fade. Uh, let's say zoom in and how long it's asking me, two seconds. So I just answered a few simple questions, no programming, and I'm building in fairly rich effects. 